Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 4, The Atrocities of King Kamsa, Text Number 5. Bahavo <coughs> Himshita Brata Shishabaha Pavako Pama Twaya Daiva Nishtrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bahavo Himshita Brata Shishava Pavakopama Twaya Daiva Nishtrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bahavo Imshita Brata Shishava Pavakopama Twaya Deva Nishtrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bahavo Imshita Brata Shishava Pavakopama Twaya Daiva Nishtrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Prabhus Shita Brata Shishava Pavakopama Tvaya Daiva Nishrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bhavo Imshita Brata Shishava Pavakopama Tvaya Daiva Nishtrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bhavo Imshita Brata Shishava Pavakopama Putri Kaika Pradiyatam. God sisters. Bhavo Imshita Brata. Shishava Pavakopama. Twaya Daiva Nishrainam. Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bhavo Imshita Brata Shishava Pavakop Tvaya Daiva Nishtrena Putri Kaika Pradiyatam Bahava 
many. Him Shita killed out of envy. Brata, my dear brother. Shishavaha, small children. Pavaka Upama, all of them equal to fire in brightness and beauty. Twaya, by you. Daiva Nishtrena, as spoken by destiny. Putrika, daughter. Eka, one. Pradiyatam, give me as your gift. Translation in purport by Srila Prabhupada. My dear brother, by the influence of destiny, you have already killed many babies, each of them as bright and beautiful as fire. But kindly spare this daughter. Give her to me as your gift. Purport. Here we see that Devaki first vo focused Kamsa's attention on his atrocious activities, his killing of her many sons. Then she wanted to compromise, compromise with him by saying that whatever he had done was not his fault, but was ordained by destiny. Then she appealed to him to give her daughter as a gift. Devaki was the daughter of a kshatriya and knew how to play the political game. In politics, there are different methods of achieving success. First, repression, dhamma, then compromise, sam, and then asking for a gift, dang. Devaki first adopted the policy of repression by directly attacking Kamsa for having cruelly, atrociously killed her babies. Then she compromised by saying that this was not his fault. And then she begged for a gift. As we learn from the history of the Mahabharat, or Greater India, the wives and daughters of the ruling class, the Kshatriyas, knew the political game. But we never find that a woman was given the post of chief executive. This is in accordance with the injunctions of Manu Samhita. But unfortunately, Manu Samhita is now being insulted. And the Aryans, the members of the Vedic society, cannot do anything. Such is the nature of Kali Yuga. Nothing happens unless ordained by destiny. Tashyaiva heto prayate tako vido na labyate yad brahmatam upari adaha tal labyate dukavad anyata sukam kalena sarvatra gabira ram hasha. Bhagavatam 1.5.18. Devaki knew very well that because the killing of her many children had been ordained by destiny, Kamsa was not to be blamed. There was no need to give good instruction to Kamsa. Upadesho hi murkanam prakopaya nashantaye chanakya pandit. If a foolish person is given good instruction, he becomes more and more angry. Moreover, a cruel person is more dangerous than a snake. A snake and a cruel person are both cruel, but a cruel person is more dangerous because although a snake can be charmed by mantras or subdued by herbs, a cruel person cannot be subdued by any means. 
Such was the nature of Kamsa. Om Agina Timarandasya Ganagana Salakaya Chakshurin Minitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupa Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Visha Shri Visha Kam Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasvaya Bhutali Shimate Bhaktivedanta Swamini Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirvisesa Sunyavani Prasachade Sutarini Vanshakalpa Tarubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bia Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha So before I can even begin to think that I can say something on any verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, I beg for the mercy of all the devotees. Immediately my class goes off. Sorry. So before I start, I, I see that there's a lot of new devotees here that are not from Mayapur, so I, I just will tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vishwadika Dasi, and I'm um, um, trying to be a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. I've been trying to do that my whole life. I, um, I was in New Vrindavan um, for many, many years where I was ashram teacher, um, community nurse, and I did quite a bit of sankirtan. In those days, we did a little bit of everything. And um, recently, I've been in Mayapur for the past many years, several years. And my service here is to... Um, I work with Nandi Sanctuary, which uh, with Nandi Sanctuary, we our service is to rescue and take care of bulls, bulls and cows, but we focus mostly on bulls. And my service is also to offer homeopathy to the uh, residents of Mayapur. So Srimad Bhagavatam is a uh, not only a scripture which has the potency to liberate us from the material entanglement, it also teaches us how one should conduct oneself in the material world. One devotee once explained in class uh, after reading about a benediction that came after reading a certain pastime. I forget the pastime now. And uh, the ben benediction was material benediction. So she was wondering why, why a material benediction given from Srimad Bhagavatam? And um, the devotee said, well, Srimad Bhagavatam is our mother. Our mother, of course, the ultimate benefit that a mother wants for all of her children is for them to become liberated from this material world. But she also takes care of their material needs because this is part of the process. We are here in the material world. So one lesson in this verse and purport is uh, the role is on the role of women in Vedic culture. Prabhupada says that Kshatriya women, women knew the game of politics but were never given the post of, chi of chief executive. Being a 21st century person who came of age in the 60s, sometimes these things are a little difficult for me to accept on first reading. N not that I would ever want such a position because it really goes so much against my nature as a woman. I'm 
much more into caring than, as you can see by my services. So it would be like trying to fit a square box into a round hole. So my objection, I can understand, is based on my false ego, not on a desire it should ever come to accept that service. And I always remember when, when I read you know, something about women should not be accepting these positions. My god sister said to me when I was a very new devotee in New Vindavan, she said, Prabhu, we didn't call each other Matajis in those days, it was Prabhu, everybody. To the extent that you identify with this body, you will be offended. So I thought, yes, this is a very good lesson. So I always have tried to remember that and use these opportunities to come at least for a few minutes to a more transcendental position. It is also, however, interesting that though Srila Prabhupada doesn't see the position of chief executive as appropriate for women, he also doesn't take the potential for powerful influence away from them. Prabhupada writes, as we learn from the history of the Mahabharat or greater India, the wives and daughters of the ruling class, the Kshatriyas, knew the political game. So their power was manifested in a less official way. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. You've heard that expression because the influence of, of a woman is actually very powerful. And so they should be protected. We have the example of Kunti, certainly a very, very powerful woman that we read about in the Bhagavatam. So powerful that when her husband was not able to produce progeny or he would die, she was able to call upon the demigods to come. And in that way, she was able to provide sons for her husband. Dropadi, oh, such a powerful woman. She had five husbands. And the Battle of Kurukshetra was fought for many reasons, but one of them was the insult to Dropadi. When, when Duryodhana ordered her to be disrobed. Gandhari, such a powerful woman. Her husband was blind. Immediately when she heard that her husband was blind, she covered her eyes and accepted blindness as her austerity for the rest of her life. So we can understand that that austerity gave her great power. Srila Prabhupada's vision is actually so per perfect. Nothing mundane or ordinary, N not for women's lib, not against women's lib. This is all mundane conception. Instead, Srila Prabhupada teaches us peaceful, orderly life conducive to spiritual realization with the understanding that actually none of us are Brahman, Vaishya, Sudra, male, female, Indian, Chinese, Bengali, Ukrainian, Colombian, dog, or Indra Gopa. None of these so-called um, names apply to us. So another lesson that we get in this verse is a lesson in politics. One of the most difficult of the material arts, because it is very difficult to ensure that the outcome will be as we desire. Even a little bit of politics, because politics pervades everything. It even pervades family life. It's just politics basically means how human beings will relate to each other and influence each other. So some material arts are actually quite easy. Cooking, 
you follow the recipe, even the most complex of procedures, like Yamuna's cookbook, you will get the result. Actually, Yamuna, when she was, Yamuna was very thorough about everything, and when she was writing her cookbook, getting ready for publication, she wanted to make sure that every recipe was explained properly and could be followed by anyone, even someone who didn't know how to cook. So she asked Vishaka Mataji, her god sister, to test the recipes, because Vishaka is not the greatest of cooks, not her propensity. And it worked, her recipes all worked, so if anyone wants to follow Yamuna's cookbook, you'll be able to do it. Garland making is a beautiful art, but simple. Painting, a difficult art, but actually, Yellow paint is yellow paint, it's just that. You mix yellow and green, I mean blue, you get green. And if you're steady and you train your hand, then the image that you want will actually manifest. I'm a homeopath. Homeopathy is a medical system which follows basic principles mixed with the art of learned intuition. If we follow the basic rules and combine that with an appreciation for the essential mental and emotional and physical constitution of a person, maybe not always instantly perfect results, but the results will come. Football or hockey or games, they're also an art. You learn the skills, you apply them faithfully, and the positive result will be there. But some material arts are very complex. One is politics. It's actually quite difficult to achieve success when you're dealing with someone who opposes you and is in fact about to take action which, will, which is evil and will do great harm. But this is actually the game of politics. And Devaki is playing the game, not just for a paltry material prize, such as land or money, or some illusory power. She has actually barely a few seconds to convince Kamsa not to kill this child of Yasoda, who has been entrusted to her. Can you imagine her position? This is actually really high drama. Kamsa had not yet done any harm to this baby, but he had killed all of her children. So when Kamsa was told by his servants that there was a baby born in Devaki and Vasudev's prison cell, he immediately went. And when he walked into the prison cell, Devaki knew this was not Uncle Kamsa coming for a friendly visit on an auspicious occasion. She knew. So all her skills as a Kshatriya-born woman came into play, and she used them. She used repression, Dharma. She pointed out how evil this action is, how evil were all his other actions. You have already killed many babies as bright and beautiful as the sun. She didn't just say you already killed so many children. You killed so many babies and they were so beautiful, my children. She is hoping that he is blinded enough by his rage, his sinful acts and fear of death, that he will not see that her argument is not actually presenting the whole truth. So the next argument was actually was actually to to make an excuse for him. It wasn't your fault. It was actually destiny. So Srila Prabhupada quotes in the purport one verse about destiny. 
This is the verse, this is the translation. Persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end which is not obtainable even by wandering from the topmost planet. As far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned, it can be obtained automatically in course of time. Just as in course of time, we obtain miseries even though we do not desire them. So this is a spiritual principle that Devaki had taken to heart. We should not make an in separate endeavor to ensure enjoyment in this material world. Actually, Kamsa could have learned a lesson from hearing that it was by the will of destiny. He should have realized, why am I going to hell? Why am I doing all these horrible things when my sense gratification or my pain in this material world is already, it's already destiny. But Kamsa was a demon. So when Devaki said, Kamsa, you are just an instrument of destiny. You are not to be blamed. He just took it that, okay, this is good. He probably took it like that. We don't know because the result of the conversation was not very good. But you didn't hear in the next verse that he was surrendering to Devaki's desire. The reality is that yes, destiny is there, but we always have a choice. We can choose to surrender to Krishna and follow the principles of Dharma or not. So Devaki didn't actually pursue this line of thought. She went to the next um, strategy. Ask the person who opposes you for a gift, Donna. This is actually good psychology because there's a little bit of good in everyone. So you give your opponent the opportunity to do something good. He'll feel good about himself. We all like this. It flatters how ego, our, our ego. So there's a good chance that your opponent will go, oh, okay, yes, I am such a wonderful person. I will give a gift to this person, the gift that they are asking for. However, Kamsa was actually beyond all good instruction. And there was no time for Devaki to give good instruction. And Devaki was actually following in the footsteps of her husband, Vasudev, who proved himself to be an expert politician when Kamsa tried to kill Devaki on their wedding day. He actually used pretty much the same, the same line of argument. First, he said to Kamsa, do not kill this woman, your sister, on her wedding day. This is wrong. What are you doing? Didn't work. Kamsa was, you know, still ready to do the evil deed. So then he tried to um, make a compromise. Okay, you have my word. I will give you each child born and you can do as you wish. <coughs> You know my reputation for being honest. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. You know my reputation for being honest. So, please agree with this. And um, Kamsa, Actually, then he asked for a gift. And what was that gift? Please, he asked him again, don't kill your sister on her wedding day. This time, Kamsa agreed. So as is the nature of most endeavors in this material world, even the most perfectly planned and executed, the result of Devaki's di political diplomacy 
was not positive. So they're actually learning a very big lesson here. Even Devaki could not convince Kamsa. Why not? Because there actually one reason was that there must be some goodwill in the heart of the enemy or the opposing party. And Prabhupada points out in this purport that there was no such goodwill in Kamsa's heart. He was cruel, heartless, consummately self-centered and selfish. The only criteria for any of, the, of his decisions was me, me, me. In our modern society, he would actually be branded as a sociopath. The only criteria for action was, what is in it for me? Prabhupada writes, a cruel person cannot be subdued by any words. In fact, he quotes Chanakya Pandit, Ch Chanakya Pandit. If a foolish person is given good instruction, he actually becomes more angry. He compares it to um, giving milk to a snake. It will simply turn into poison. Kamsa was given all good reasons not to kill this child. He wasn't given good instruction. Devaki didn't even try that. But the good reasons were given. She appealed to Kamsa as her brother. I'm your younger sister. I'm in a condition of poverty and helpless. You've already killed all my children. She made excuses for him for killing her own children. She finally appealed, kindly spare this daughter. The result was not good. Moments later, Kamsa ripped the baby, Subhadra, out of Devaki's arms and was preparing to dash Subhadra to the ground. So, the rest of the story I won't tell you. I'll keep it a surprise. What is something we can learn from this story? The story again reminds the conditioned soul, and we need to keep hearing this, that we are completely dependent on Krishna. Ultimately, it is not Devaki who saves her child. It is the child herself, the Mahamaya, Yoga Maya potency of Krishna, who saves herself. So, it's Krishna. Krishna is saving. And he saves Krishna's dev devotees, Vasudeva and Devaki, from this inconceivable, unbearable horror and heartbreak. Devaki and Vasudeva's surrender is perfect. Their endeavor to carry out their duties as parents and save their children is perfect. Vasudeva's commitment to absolute honesty in fulfilling his vow to Kamsa is perfect. They have done their best with no attachment to the result as instructed by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna reciprocates perfectly with his devotee. So if there are any questions, um, I am very hard of hearing. And uh, so I have to ask you to actually come forward and ask the question because I, even with the microphone, I, I don't hear very well. So if there are any comments or questions. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, please, can you come forward? I'm sorry to make you do this, but. Yes. Yes. Right.
I understand, yes. That's a very good question. I, I hope, I don't know if I can answer it. The question is, um, Devaki and Vasudev were forced to, to give their children to Kamsa, all of their previous children to Kamsa, because it was the, um, and she saw that as the will of destiny. She was telling Kamsa, this was destiny. You're not actually to blame. Um, sometimes in our lives, we are in a position like that where um, something, um, something evil or something not very good is about to happen. And there is a possibility that we can do something about it. What do we do? Do we accept that as the will of destiny? Or do we... Um, or do we uh, do the needful and actually make a big endeavor to stop the action. Um, I've, <laughs> I've wondered about this many, many times in my own life. And actually, even in the verse, um, well, not so direct, well, yes. Actually, yes, it was in the verse, but not directly, and it was my thought that came from the verse. So, there are so many situations. If something involves my, my sense gratification or my uh, protecting my false ego, then we need to let go and allow that to happen. If it's related to our service, uh, from what our scriptures say, yes. We should make the endeavor, because this is our service, to protect this child or to make sure that this situation, which is not right, is corrected. So we should make as much of an endeavor as we possibly can with the position that we're in. Um, it's not, we are limited, we're in the material world. So it may not always be possible for us to do as much as we would want to do or even as much as needs to be done. But it is our duty to endeavor to our best ability and Vasudev and Devaki, they did that. They actually did that. When, um, when Devaki was being driven on Vasudev's chariot, Kamsa was threatening to kill her. Vasudev had to think very quickly. Again, it was a moment-by-moment -moment situation. Okay, any second my wife is going to be killed. It's my duty, I'm her husband, to protect her. What do I do? I can't, I'm not strong enough to kill Kamsa. He has a whole army. So I will make a bargain with him. And he made that bargain. And I believe I remember reading Srila Prabhupada said that he was, there was a possibility with this bargain that later on he could again approach Kamsa and try to save his children. And in fact, Vasudev did this. But Kamsa proved himself to be so cruel that he did the opposite. He just killed every one of Devaki's children. So it is our duty, and we should not um, cop out. We should not just walk away and pretend that we're not responsible. At the same time, I was given an instruction by Radhanath Swami one time when I was involved with a very difficult situation where I perceived that there was some really wrong things going on. And I was 
doing my best with my very limited ability to see that the situation was rectified. And I was actually becoming quite disturbed because I, uh, you know, <laughs> I couldn't change anything and, and the situation was going on. So Radha Swami said to me, you stay there and you do your service and you keep doing this as long as there is a possibility that you can make a positive change. When that possibility is no longer there, or if your consciousness becomes so disturbed that you, you're, you're not Krishna conscious, you can't, you know, you can't even um, think of Krishna anymore, then you walk away. You have done your best. So I think basically that's what we need to do. Anybody else would like to comment on this? Yes. <laughs> Please come forward a little bit. You Srila Prabhupada was asked many times by devotees, should they go to a doctor? Uh, you know, one of the reasons I can't health. hear you is because I can't see your lips moving. Can somebody may, maybe speak to her for me? One of the Please come forward. Please just come uh -huh. forward and, and ask me your question. No, it's not a question. You asked for a comment. Hmm? It's not a question. Oh, it's a comment. Okay, comment. then all the devotees can benefit. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. good. Hare so, Krishna. Srila Prabhupada was asked many times about health. What should we do if we have bad health? Should we go to a doctor? Or should we just depend on Krishna? So Prabhupada said, go to a doctor. And then they asked Srila Prabhupada, well, should we use like natural cure or should we try to use whatever, Western medicine, whatever. Prabhupada said, use whatever works. Use what? Use whatever works. <coughs> and then um, <coughs> there, was a th there was a third point. I'm kind of losing my, my train of thought. Um, we can leave it at that. I'm not, I'm not remembering now. There was another point, but Prabhupada wanted us to try. He wanted to, I'm just confirming what you said, as long as there's a possibility that we should try. We should try. And we leave the result up to Krishna in all of our endeavors. Not, very nice class. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I, I didn't hear everything you said, but um, I can, you were saying how, how um, you know, the question about a doctor, should I do the needful or just depend on Krishna? And um, Prabhupada said we should do the needful, then depend on Krishna, right? This is the gist of it. So I'll tell you a little story. One time, I, this was many, many years ago, I was in the hospital. I had had a, a small operation. And um, in the hospital ward, there were three other people. And a born-again Christian preacher came in to, uh, to pray over everybody. And... Um, I'm, I was sitting there, and luckily he didn't come to me first. I don't know what I would have said to him. But he, he came to each bed first. There were all these, they were actually quite sick, all these people that were in the same room as me. And um, he was praying over them, and God will cure you. I invoke the power of God to come and cure you. And he was doing all this stuff, you know, and praying over them and and each person he was going and praying over them and finally he came to me and he said sister would you like me to pray to God to cure you I said I don't think you need to do that <laughs> I said God I have God already knows what needs to be done and and um and I have put myself in God's hands, so I'm not going to petition God any further. 
<laughs> and the man went, okay. <laughs> and he walked away. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> and the other ladies in the room kind of looked over at me because everyone could just hear whatever was going on in the room. <laughs> it was very, very... Uh, Actually, I surprised myself when I said that to him. Any other comments or questions? Uh-oh, can you come closer? It's just comment. Oh, comment, okay. Hare Krishna. It's working? Yes. Hare Krishna, is audible? well? It's okay. So just comment that the I am uh, I'm, I'm, uh, thank you for giving chance. I am not actually on or not. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is it audible? Okay. Uh, so few things that uh, you said that a uh, uh, few things which uh, came to my mind uh, regarding the point that was mentioned in the first paragraph. Uh, so I, I, the few points which came to my mind, I, I'm just reading out. I just noted it down. The souls in women bodies don't need to occupy posts, but they can make big things happen by working behind the scenes, by influencing persons occupying big posts, such as their such as their mothers or wives or daughters, by their austerity, chastity, not by religious ways. So for a few examples that I could cite, the Vrinda Devi. She protected her husband, and then finally Lord had to appear to break her vow of chastity, and then she cursed Lord to become a Shaligram Shila, and then Lord also cursed, him, uh, cursed her to become a tree. That's we worship Delhi as a Tulsi. Then uh, the Satyavati, who was fisherman's daughter, she controlled King Shantanu, and that's why uh, even if Lord Maharaj Shantanu had son, his uh, his son. Uh, he uh, he was he had to reason and then we can say that whole Mahabharata happened. The Draupadi's opinion was always respected by Pandavas and she was queen of whole world. Uh, then also we can see that Lord Krishna also Krishna acts as as per the will of Srimati Radharani. Then Pr Prabhupada in some purpose mentioned the power of Cleopatra. I don't know uh, who who she controlled, but she influenced also one someone. So, uh, I, I, well, as I understand it, uh, queens used to control the kings or they used to influence their decisions. Another example that Kaikai, Kai, she controlled or she begged Dasharath, which made Lord Ram to go to exile for 14 years. So, this is the power of women that I can understand and they don't need to occupy big posts as, as I see from this. I, 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 th I thought that I just said. And one of the examples that I can, can also say that in chess also the queen does so many things but kings just sits and does few many things but queen is there <laughs> so doing so many things so I, I feel that that's the power of women and they don't need to occupy a big post for showing their power that's my point Hare Krishna Hare thank Krishna. you Prabhu so all glories to Srila Prabhupada Hare Krishna Thank you.